Off script. Yeah, yeah. Growing up on the East Coast, when we was in juvie and all that, we read books about this side. You know, outside of colors, we, the book that we had in jail was Monster Cody book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a great book, a lot of lies, but great book. It was exaggerated. And, and, and wait, 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 wait. Hold on, wait, nigga. What do you mean? Exaggerated how? It was a lot of it exaggerated. How? Like, Monster Cody was a dope fiend. Crack. Wait, well, Monster Cody was a... Hold on. Was they a, talk about Monster Cody like... like like how they speak on Big U, but then I'm gonna say this: you can't be a, a a dope fiend, right? That means you fell victim to the game, right? And still get the same credit in the same statute as somebody that didn't. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. So I'm not saying he wasn't a rod in his own in his own way, but you know, shit. If any of us write a book. You know, we're going to make it seem a little more than what it really is because guess what? It's people on the East Coast that's going to read and y'all going to believe every motherfucking word you believe. Yeah. You read, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not take, saying that the nigga was some punk nigga, none of that, but they tried to make it look like when he walked in the motherfucking room, it was just silence and everybody was shaking in their boots. That nigga was some A-Tray gangster. That nigga had a notorious mother, an enemy called the Rolling Sixties. And them niggas was feeding on each other. You know what I mean? Outside of everything else they didn't get along with. The whole hood's the car. What about the East Coasters? You know what I mean? You know, I understand where you're from. Right around the corner. Nah, no. Anything with an owner, anything with a neighborhood owner was his enemy. So he wasn't, he damn sure wasn't walking in nothing, shutting shit down like that. Right. You know, that wasn't, I ain't taking nothing from, you know, I really read the book, though. No, I read, it was a great book. The great book. He wrote three books. I only read one. Well, Monster Cody was the one that, that changed the game for people yeah. on the East Coast reading that shit in the yeah. joint. No, like I mean, that's remember I told you a couple years ago. Remember the book I, I only heard I had, people talk about it. Like he I, said, I, I, when I, you read Monster Cody, you remember the I book idea I had. I had a I had a book I idea where where the book is. I, I got it. Kind of got it from Dean Koontz. I know you read his book. Yeah, Dean Koontz, How to be two or three different stories going on and they all come together in the end. Mm -hmm. So I was telling uh, uh, draws. We should do the same book. Like he start off the first two, three chapters, and then my, and he has come pick up from where it's at. And as you get to the end of the book, as it did in reality, it should come together. Big Tookie, let me ask. You. What's up, Charles Top Media TV? Make sure y'all don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Damn, Wack One Hundred ain't got no chill button. What y'all think about him? You know, on the Million Dollars Worth of Game podcast, talking about Monster Cody. You know, saying he was a dope fiend and how he was. Exaggerated in the stories that he wrote in his book, the autobiography of Monster. Big U, on the other hand, calls Master Cody a legend, a well-respected enemy who he was trying to make a name off if they had ran into each other. Oh, days out of that. Did you know Monster Cody? Yeah, I, I never, I, I was never been no, in the same space with no. Monster. Monster was like the folklore to us. We, I'm three years younger than Cody. You know what I mean? And so we was we was always looking he's to the get right a name off of Monster. He's always right being prison. When we both was in prison, he's the right each other. Yeah, I seen that somewhere. He's the right Tupac. Cody was Cody was the enigma, man. He if if he could have stayed stayed yeah. straight, he'd have been he'd have been a, a mark. Yeah. I look up to him. I got a lot of respect for him. You know, some people just can't live out here. Yeah. This yeah, world's a trip for some people's mind. Yeah. It's that challenge. You know what he's talking about is we got homies who, who who can navigate while they're in prison, incarcerated, because that that. You ever court seen his penmanship? Ooh, yeah, I seen him right. Oh, I mean, he was right, right. very intellectually stout. But when he came here, the discipline of not dealing with, you know, falling to that 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 crave, mm -hmm. he couldn't handle that. He couldn't master that. But he was a great adversary because he was yeah. an adversary to us. So you know he was a, he was a gangster. We was the sixties, mm -hmm. and he was a legend. So, Can't you take that from him. That's amazing. He's the right to you, Mike. You said, "Yeah, hey, we we made each other fire." He was trying to recruit Mike, bro. No, it's not. <laughs> no, wait. Time out. Time out. Time out. Can we talk about this man knocking people's eyes out? Why didn't you? Why box? did you do that? Why didn't you man? box? That was How wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this man knocking niggas out eyes out and shit. Like so that was Big U giving Master Cody rest in peace his props for being a legend on the streets, even though they never ran into each other, you know. Um, but let me know what y'all think about WAC 100, you know, just kind of going in on anybody and everybody. You know, I guess he didn't like Master Cody's reputation or he might have been jealous of that reputation or whatever it may be. Something caused 
whack 100 to, you know, speak bad on Monster Cody, even though he did speak on him, you know, while Monster Cody was alive. You know, this interview was about three, two years ago. Make sure y'all don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell, y'all. Peace.